Hey there and welcome to the channel. Coral Island team has been a little bit quiet so far this year, but they've just broken their silence and we have our very first dev update for the year of 2024. This is apparently only part one of a part two series of what's to come. In part one, we're getting the land news and part two coming later on. We'll be getting the details of the ocean content that's coming to the game. So let's take a look at part one first and see what's new guys. On the new roadmap, you can see it's been divided up into 1.1, 1.2 and 1.3, which leads me to believe at this point, if they're divided equally throughout the year, that could mean that we'll see an update every four months. I don't work for Coral Island though, so take that with a grain of salt, guys. Maybe them dividing it up means nothing as far as the timeline goes, especially if anything pops up unexpectedly, but that's what I'm speculating. As you can see in 1.1 though, there are so many features coming. First, it looks like we have the addition of the S town rank quest line. So if you're someone who's already obtained the A rank in your town, after the update, you're gonna be able to further progress your storyline with more challenges and achievements to unlock. I myself am no nowhere near this town rank since I started my game over from scratch, but knowing I have even more storyline to discover makes me feel reassured that this game will be one that I can play for a long time. In my opinion, the best games are the ones with a long storyline and the replayability factor. And so far, the team is definitely setting themselves up to check both on those boxes. Town Rank A comes with more to look forward to in the 1.1 update as well, with the addition of attractions. Once reaching Town Rank A, you can then unlock a new Town Rank category that allows you to build attractions in your town, such as a ramen restaurant, solar garden, a recreational center, and quite a few more, all of which will benefit your town and attract visitors to the island. We do get a little sneak peek in the blog of the gym and the ramen restaurant, so let's check those out. The team says in the post that everybody needs access to great ramen, and I could not agree more. I love me some ramen. I swear I could eat it for every meal, that and sushi. The restaurant appears to be going into that spot in town that's been for sale all of this time now, so no more empty building. I think it's such a cute touch to add that little ramen bowl to the top of it too. And the way that the socket and pan sign also transitions, after getting the ramen restaurant in. This is such a cute addition and I can't wait. With the gym, I find it kind of humorous that they named it the decent gym. <laughs> I think it looks really cute. Curious why they went all pink, but if I went to the gym, I would definitely go there. Although I'm sure we won't actually be able to use the treadmills, I like the idea of having these extra locations in to attract tourists and to make our town feel more alive. I do kind of hope that they add something in later down the road to make it where you can actually interact with these attractions around town more in depth. But for now, considering we can't play pool or darts at the fish and sips or really do much in public areas except at the registers, I'll just add that to my Coral Island wish list. On top of being able to get S town rank overall, your museum will also soon be able to achieve S rank as well. And in that, all the fossils you've donated will be able to be animated. So if you're like, eh, who wants to look at some donated bones? Maybe rethink that and head over to your museum to check out what the dino bones you donated look like as dinos back in the day. Over near the Lake Temple, there's always been these crumbled rocks in the background close to where you often see Ann and Paul taking photos and recording. But when the update comes, there will be more opportunity for learning about the local heritage through a new quest. You'll be able to recover fragments of the Guardian's mural and while the blog post doesn't say much more on that right now, it looks like from the gift that you'll be able to restore the Guardian's mural and then from the second photo, make offerings at the new shrine to unlock four guardians. What will the guardians do after being unlocked? For now, that's still a mystery. Now, why would the devs bring attractions to the game if not to bring tourists too? There were eight backers on the Kickstarter who have either created a design of or turned themselves into an NPC in the game as tourists. And with that, we now have these beautiful, beautiful character portraits of all eight of them. And before you get too excited, the team does mention that they are not romanceable. Sorry guys, but you can chat with them. They'll be visiting the island Island two seasons each year. Looks like they'll be coming to the festivals, hanging out at different parts of the island like the main town sign, the beach, and also the community center. So make sure you keep an eye out for them. Each will have their own unique seasonal outfits as well. And they all look so awesome in my opinion. Not that I'm surprised because the art style in Coral Island is incredibly beautiful. And I don't know if it's in their plans, but being able to get some of these clothing items and hairstyles for our own character would be really amazing too. And if chatting with the tourists wasn't enough, the 1.1 update, you can also look forward to writing your favorite dateable NPCs to hang out. Yes, hang out, you guys. You can see in the gifts that they ask Alice if she wants to hang out and then a little map appears where you can choose where you want to go. And we also get this cute little sneak peek of what hanging out at the museum looks like. 
You can earn friendship points with them by inviting them to ramen, enjoying a fishing date, or having a movie night. The options all depend on your progression. And not only can you hang out with them once a week, but twice a week as well. I absolutely love this. I mean, sure, the characters are all super good looking and that's great and all, but adding more substance to our relationships on Coral Island is a must. So I'm really glad to see that this is coming in this update. And even though this only pertains to the romanceable characters for now, the team states that they're also planning on adding this feature to non NPCs in the future too. I personally would love to go fishing with Sunny. He cracks me up. <laughs> Garden with Betty because she is the cutest thing. And chill with Erica because I love her energy. Honestly, I'd love to hang out with all of the characters. So I hope in the future we have options for every single one and aren't just limited to a couple. Which of the non dateable NPCs would you be most likely to hang out with and why? Let me know in the comments. We already have 10 ranch animals in the game, but the team said that's not enough and we know you need more. So the 1.1 update is coming with both the ostrich and the buffalo. These specific animals you'll have to acquire from the savanna, which I believe becomes accessible to you after completing the rare altar at the lake temple in the 1.1 update. Not much more info is given on these animals at this time, but it does look like the ostrich is going to lay eggs and the buffalo will produce some sort of milk. And I think it's safe to assume this will most likely add more options within our crafting machines for new products as well. I hope so anyway. Although we have so many now, I can barely keep track. If you want to swap out your chicken costume for a little bit 1.1 is bringing more clothing options too i'm most interested in the all black with gold details vibe but i wonder how many new options there will be overall new decor is also coming so if you're broke like i am in the game we need to start saving some coins first it looks like we have karen's bedroom just kidding but it is an all pufferfish based room if you're someone who thinks the pufferfish corporation isn't all that bad but for those of us who just enjoy a little bit more color a little bit less depressy there's also this super cute super vibrant party-esque room decor complete with balloons, banners, a table for presents, and a rug that looks like cake. What more could you want? We also get a sneak peek of a few other details coming to the game, such as the finale of the Giants storyline from the mines with the caption, I wonder which way you ought to go. For those of us who want our characters to wear hats without losing all of their hair, they're adding in two new hairstyles to go with the hats, as well as leaving the bald option for those of you who do enjoy using that one. So it looks like we're gonna have a bald option, short hair option, and a messy low bun option. I'm glad to see that they're at least adding the low bun option because the hats have definitely been a no-go for me since they've not been able to work without original hair disappearing. I can for sure work with the low bun for now, but I do hope that they add more style options later. Wildlife like this fluffy bear will start to appear more around the island as it heals. Also wondering what kind of other animals are going to pop up and where, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. They're also removing pufferfish dolls at festivals, which I feel indifferent to honestly. I don't really mind them being there because I do feel like they are a reminder that Pufferfish is trying to take over the island. Even if none of us, or at least most of us, will never let that happen. A huge update for those of you who speak Thai. The team announced that Thai is the next language they're working on to be added into the game. So while it's not exactly said to be coming in the 1.1 update, it is in the works at least. And lastly, while this blog update didn't include more info on the ocean related content of the 1.1 update, like the merfolk storyline, relationships, romance, ocean farming, and ranching. The team says they'll be covering more on that come April. I don't know about you guys, but I cannot wait to hear more about the ocean news. Farming and ranching underwater sounds like a really cool element to add, even though my farm on land keeps me pretty busy as it is. And yeah, April seems far away, but at least we have all of these things to look forward to. And in the meantime, we can keep playing, working towards getting to town rank A, completing the rare altar at the Lake Temple, and saving up some coins to afford all of the new clothes, decor, and the two new ranch animals. What upcoming features are you guys most looking forward to? Are you looking more forward to hearing about the ocean news? Leave a comment below and let me know. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. Thank you guys for watching my video. As always, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you did enjoy it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.